Hey, welcome to Truth Unbound. I'm your host, Walter Swaim. I'm really, really glad you're with me today. Uh, just came off of a great Easter weekend, being able to worship and praise and exalt Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose from the dead, literally and bodily, so that we could have forgiveness of sin and to have eternal life with God forever, and uh, by putting our faith and trust in Him alone once and for all. And so we did that, had a great time with family, and enjoyed the great fun and food and and rest, and uh, we had great weather on top of that here in Houston. So anyway, a great Easter weekend. But on Good Friday, uh, the Pope opened his mouth again, and uh, the Vatican released this interview on Italian television. Now, of course, this was meant to be a time of a message of hope and salvation due to Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and punishment, and ended up being instead a sweeping and condemning and divisive judgment with his words upon primarily uh, white people, especially white Europeans and of the West, who in his determination and judgment, well, we're all racists. Now, in his interview on the Italian television, and we have the transcript, or we're going to be quoting from the transcript, provided directly from the Vatican, and uh, we have a few things to say in response. So are you ready? Well, let's do this. Hey, thanks again for being here with me at Truth Unbound. And if you'd like to hear more about the key questions of things that are going on in life and in society and culture and the church and theology and find the answers from the unlimited and unbound truth of God, then would you click on like on this video also to subscribe and click on all notifications so you can get the latest when it drops. And then please share this with everyone you can and let's get the word out. And uh, well, let's get to it. Okay, so Pope Francis did this interview with a Lorena Bianchetti. Now, there's no translation or way to legally play portions of this, but the link to the transcript will be in the description of this video. Um, here's a portion of what he said, or the portion that concerns us the most. Now, Ms. Bianchetti asked this, she said, uh, translated, and at this time, your holiness, I think of those fleeing. There are those images that show the flight of Ukrainian people who are forced to leave their land, their homes, their loved ones. It is one of the latest exoduses that we are probably, uh, alas, becoming accustomed to. But in this case, there has been a real concrete response. Does this response, I ask you, do you think it means there are cracks in the walls of indifference, of prejudice toward those who flee from other parts of the world, wounded by war? Or will refugees continue to be subdiv subdivided into the category of being an annoyance? Well, here's how Pope Francis answered. It is true. Refugees are subdivided. There's first class, second class, skin color. If they come from a developed country or one that is not developed, we are racists. Racists. We are racists. And this is bad. Okay, let's stop right there. So what he and she and others in the media especially are referring to are reports uh, and videos to supposedly back it up of refugee, refugees who are not white, especially not Ukrainian, that are being denied access to other countries. But she, and especially he, is also opening up the, the answer to refugees who are not just fleeing to European countries, but Western countries in general worldwide, with all white majority populations. And he's saying that they're being racist in their treatment of refugees, not like them in skin color, etc. So if entry is denied, at least initially, and the doors of their borders are not swung wide open and without any restraints, then he judges the entire culture as being racist against the refugees. Now, besides the fact that the Vatican is surrounded by walls that are 39 feet tall and 11 feet thick, and that the Vatican has only received a handful of refugees in so many years, there could also be other reasons why refugees are being held back, especially when they're coming as a flood of millions across borders. One of those reasons are big security concerns. There has been documented presence of Muslim jihadis within the refugee population. In fact, the Islamic State announced in 2015 it would flood Europe with half a million refugees. 
Another factor is that some of those seen in the videos were observed to be pushing ahead of women and children who were given absolute first priority for obvious reasons. It's also true that the Ukraine ordered all men 18 to 60 years of age to stay and fight and not flee the country. Also, it could be that the nations uh, that are receiving the refugees have swelled in such size that their infrastructure and economy are literally unable to absorb more, at least for the present moment. And then add to this the data that he did not name one Western nation, especially European, that had rejected any refugees outright. France and Germany especially have allowed millions to come into their country, from many nations, especially in recent years. And according to a Pew report in 2019, that as of 2017, unauthorized immigrants ac accounted for nearly one in five people living in Europe without e European Union citizenship. Half of that number in the UK and Germany alone. Four countries, Germany, the UK, Italy, and France, account for 70% of Europe's unauthorized immigrants. About half of Europe's unauthorized immigrants have arrived in the region recently, within the last few years, and most are young and from all over the world. So a simple fact check available to anyone on the internet from the true sources of information on immigration reveals that these white majority nations have and are taking in millions of refugees, regardless of skin color or cultural background. Now, a very popular but poor interpretation of Scripture that many use when it comes to refugees, and the Pope has repeated as well, is, well, here it is in his own words. The problem of the refugees is a problem that Jesus suffered too, because he was a migrant and a refugee in Egypt when he was a child, to escape death. How many of them are suffering to escape death? There is an image of the flight into Egypt that a Piedmont artist executed. He sent it to me, and I made holy cards from it. It shows Joseph with the baby who are fleeing. But St. Joseph does not have a beard. No, he is Syrian from today with a baby who is fleeing the war today. An anguished face that these people have, just like Jesus, forced to flee. And Jesus went through all these things. He is still there. Okay, so he's saying that Jesus was a refugee too, and that we must see today's refugees in the same way. That should we love and help refugees on the basis of love as believers in Jesus? Yes, as the church which has a different role than government, by the way. But let me get back to the point here made by Pope Francis, that Jesus was a refugee like the ones of today. Let's back up. Let's set the record straight directly. Jesus was not a refugee in the modern-day sense of the term. Now, the UN Refugee Agency defines a refugee as outside of their country of origin because of feared government persecution, conflict, violence, or other circumstances that have seriously disturbed public order and who, as a result, require international protection. So refugees are those that cross national borders to seek safety in nearby countries and need sanctuary in another country. Now, Jesus traveled in the arms of his earthly parents because they were directed by God to do so each and every time. And the very first time was not fleeing anything. All the people of the Roman Empire were commanded to go back to their family's native city so that a census could be taken accurately of the people within the Roman Empire. It was not to avoid persecution or death. It was so they could be counted and registered as citizens. And, of course, so they could be taxed. But another huge difference is that they were not fleeing for safety in another nation. They were sent or went to different provinces or states of the same nation. And in that time, it was the Roman nation or empire. All right, now, the closest this comes to, or Jesus' situation comes to what is described as now in a refugee situation and even then, 
but it's it's fine it's found in Matthew chapter 2 and in verse 13 now when they had departed behold an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream and said rise take the child and his mother and flee to egypt and remain there until i tell you for herod is about to search for the child to destroy him now again this was by command of god and there was no large scale run of refugees but it was ra- rather it was herod's threat directed to jesus alone And he murdered a few dozen children, yes, to get to him, but it was about Jesus alone. So Jesus never fit the modern or even ancient description of a refugee. There was no war going on. And to top it off, they traveled and lived within the sphere of what was majority Middle Eastern culture and their shades of skin color, if you will. Not to nations of white Anglo-Saxon blood and skin color, which wouldn't come for centuries later. So, Pope Francis, you, you are, you were and are simply wrong, and you're being judgmental. Now, this may sound good to those who are indoctrinated in intersectionality, critical race theory, and other leftist, Marxist, and socialist ideologies, but it is not the reality, neither culturally nor biblically. Now, racism at any level, in any church or denomination, and especially of its leaders, should be rejected entirely in word and deed. The old song is still true. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. John 3.16, For God so loved the world, everyone, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We find out that one day in heaven, we will see what we as a church in his kingdom on earth now should be reflecting every day and in every church. It's found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands. So the gospel of Jesus Christ means that we should be loving one another as Christ loved us, unconditionally free of racism and prejudice. And let us, as followers of Jesus, protect and defend and serve one another without judgment of any externals. Well, I hope this has helped clarify what God truly says about all of us, and how we are to respond, not only to what the Pope said, but as followers of Jesus to everyone around us here and worldwide. Don't forget, if you would, please, to like, subscribe, follow, and share, and comment. And until next time, follow Jesus, and you'll always follow the truth.